Okay, guys, we finally reached the last um, example under this objective of combining functions, okay? Um, so finally, we have um, a couple different functions. P of x is equal to x minus 3, a linear function. Q of x is equal to the square root of x plus 4. This is a radical function or a square root function, you can say. All right, what we're going to do is find a couple of functions here. Um, and state um, its domain, all right? So the first function I'm gonna have you find is a difference, fun difference function, and it'll be p minus q at x. So this is very similar to what we were doing earlier, um, just with different functions. Now, we're gonna take p, which is x minus three. Um, to be really clear, I'm gonna use parentheses here. Um, I might have failed to use parentheses earlier, but it, it's always safer to use parentheses. So there's P. I am going to subtract from it uh, function G, which is the square root of X plus 4. So that's what P minus Q at X looks like. All right. Now, uh, you can see, hopefully, that um, there's no way to simplify this any further. So I'm just going to get rid of, I'm going to clean it up a little bit, get rid of these um, parentheses. We don't need them. And just box this. So that there's the function. I know it does. It may not look pretty, but it is what it is. It's x minus 3 minus the square root of x plus 4. Now, we want to talk about its domain. Now, when you look at function p, um, I'm going to draw your attention up here. Look at function p. Function p up here is a linear function, therefore its domain is all real numbers. However, function q up here, guys, function q is a square root function, um, and so we have to be careful about its domain. So let's have a conversation right now about the domain of q. I'm going to move this up a little bit, okay? Um, when you look at this square root function, um, I want you to focus on the radicand. When I say the radicand, I mean the expression that is underneath the radical. I just highlighted it for you. Now, we know that the radicand, the expression underneath that square root, must be positive. Well, why? Well, because if you take the square root of a negative number, you'll get imaginary solutions. And so we want to stay with real number um, inputs and real number outputs. So what we want to say is that expression underneath the square root, when we say it must be positive, really what we're saying is it has to be greater than or equal to zero. Um, that's how I say that the expression must be positive. Um, I don't want just strictly greater than zero. I want greater than or equal to zero because I can actually evaluate the square root of zero. The square root of zero is just zero. So we want to say x plus four must be greater than or equal to zero. Now what I would invite you to do at this point is to solve for x. Subtract four from both sides of this inequality to find that x must be greater than or equal to negative four. With that being said, I can see that the domain for this function that we found must be the set of all x values that are greater than or equal to negative 4. So we're going to say from negative 4 to positive infinity. This will be the domain for that function. I hope that was clear. Okay, guys, this last one will wrap it up for us. Um, same two functions, p and q, and the function I want you to consider finding is q over, or q divided by, p at x. Now let's not forget we want to find this function and also state its domain. Um, I would challenge you to give this last one a shot, maybe consider pausing the video, and um, try working on your own, and I'll check in with you in just a second. Okay, everybody, I hope you um, put q of x in the numerator and p of x in the denominator. 
And so this function is done. We found it. So I'm just going to box this here. Uh, and there we have it. Now, um, let's talk about its domain. Okay, so we have a few things to consider when we talk about the domain of this function. Let me move this up just a little bit here. Uh, there. Now, when we talk about the domain, can you focus your attention on the numerator, please, only? We just finished talking about this um, a minute ago. The square root of x plus 4, we have to make sure that that expression underneath that square root is greater than or equal to zero for the same reasons um, as uh, uh, you know as before in this video we already solved this inequality we said that x has to be greater than or equal to negative four okay so as it stands already our, our domain must include x values that are only greater than or equal to negative four but in addition to that notice that your denominator which is x minus 3, uh, let me rewrite that a little neater there, your denominator x minus 3 must not be 0. We know why, because if it is 0, then the, the whole function is undefined. I am uh, solving for x here, so we can see that x must not be equal to 3. With both of these conditions uh, together, we see that the domain um, must include values that are greater than or equal to negative 4, and at the same time, not 3. So with those two things, uh, statements together, we're saying that the domain is from negative 4, and anything larger than it, Except at 3, you must exclude 3, so I put a parenthesis, union from 3 to positive infinity. So the domain of this function would be um, any real number greater than or equal to negative 4, um, excluding 3. All right, this is the first objective done, ladies and gentlemen, of 4.1. So this was 4.1, how we combine functions and find their domain. And we also found function values in example one. Um, in the next video, um, we're, we'll still be in chapter four, section one, but we're gonna talk about something called the difference quotient.